Welcome to this week's edition of Mountain Outhouse. I'm your host, Jam Jam. This is the crazy to happen in running this week. This week's stories include a new female transcontinental run record, Flagstaff's domination over the race weekend, and a change to the 2019 AC100 registration date. A new women's transcontinental record has been set for the running coast to coast across the lower 48. Sandra Villanez ran 3,126.52 miles from San Francisco to New York in 54 days, 16 hours, 24 minutes. That's an average of 56 miles per day for 54 days in a row. Dang! So who is Sandra? Well, she's pretty new to the ultra scene, starting in 2015 with a 50K on up to the 100 mile distance, and moving quickly up the ranks to her first 100 mile win this year at the Razorback 100, and also winning the 2017 Badwater 135 in Death Valley. Kudos to you, Sandra. Stoked to see what's next. There was a lot of hype surrounding this year's TNF 50 race in San Francisco over the weekend, and we'll get on to the results in a hot second. But first, we've got to make mention of a bit of a pre-race blunder on the part of some brands who weren't quite in sync with their own athletes. First, we'll turn to pre-race previews. I Run Far does a great job with their in-depth look at the competition, but having posting it a almost full two weeks out, come race morning it looked like a marked up rough draft of a typical college essay. A solid number of names had been crossed off the start list as scratches piled up after athletes decided to usher in their off season a little bit early. Readers of the website or athletes themselves kept irunfar.com in the loop, but many forgot to inform the marketing departments of the teams and brands they actually represent. Ian Torrance, who has been a mainstay at JFK for the past couple of decades, didn't run this year, but both Squirrels Nut Butter and Nathan Sports both wished him luck at the race, which he had to correct them that he was indeed not racing. Nathan Sports also tweeted out good luck to Carolyn Bowler, who was also a non-starter. So the big North Face race took place this past weekend on a new course in 2017, this time finishing in Chrissy Field on the south side of the Golden Gate Bridge. The race was stacked on both the men's and women's sides, and the race did not disappoint. A pack of three split away from the majority of the field midway through, with Tim Frerichs ultimately prevailing over Miller v. Hawks round two, with the trio finishing in that order. For the ladies, Ida Nilsson repeated as champ, with Claire Gallagher charging hard at the end to place second. It was 2015 champ Megan Kimmel rounding out the top three. Now moving across the country to the Beast Coast and the 55th running of the JFK 50 mile. It was a second time win for Emily Torrance, who won in six hours, 27 minutes, with Jackie Merritt 30 minutes back and Sabrina Little rounding out the top three in 7.01. Huge props to my boy, Eric Sensman for the big win on the men's side. He took the emotional victory in five hours, 46 minutes. With Sensman's recent move to Flagstaff, all four winners of the big 50 mile races this weekend all have Flagstaff ties. Michael Owen took second in 6.03 and Anthony Kunkel was third in 6.05. Speaking of JFK, we had one of our very own Mountain Outhouse supporters running, and he sent us this guest video. This is uh, Trails Von Mutter, and I'm in the middle of the JFK 50. Since I'm in the present, but it's in the past for you. So can you tell me who won this race? Because I won't know till later. It's a great day out here at JFK, and I hope you're having a nice day too. There was a trail race death this past weekend at the Japanese 100 km Saitama race after a competitor fell off a cliff mid-race while climbing up near Mount Amochi. The man reportedly lost his balance on the trail. Olivier LeBlanc smashed the 48-hour American record this weekend at the Icarus Multi-Day, running 262.1811 miles to beat Philip McCarthy's previous mark by 5 miles. Lotteries are now closed for America's two most exclusive 100-mile ultramarathons, and here are the official counts of how many entrants are in each. With varying degrees of qualifying standards and races, many runners chase certain events each year solely to be able to apply for these two beasts. Also interesting is that both lotteries will be held on the same date, December 2nd. And as a side note, yes, I'm entered in both lotteries for 2018. So. Western States is boasting 4,922 applicants this year, while Hard Rock is a little under half of that at 2,258. Both have received the highest number of applicants ever, and since spots aren't going up, 
we all now have the smallest chance ever of getting in. So good luck to everyone. Um, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not, not. Quite... Interesting announcement coming out of the Angelus Crest 100 today that will affect the 2019 race entry procedure. If you don't know anything about the AC100, it is a classic SoCal point-to-point -point 100 miler starting in the town of Wrightwood and running across the Angeles National Forest, utilizing some of the PCT and finishing near Pasadena outside of Los Angeles. It's a badass and historic race. However, there's been a growing frustration with those signing up for and running the race each year with the entry procedure. Race director Ken Hamada has not been very progressive to say the least. He has recently opened up registration the day after the previous year's race, which always sells out very quickly. After moving to a lottery system, which is conducted behind closed doors in recent years, there's no maintained wait list for the event, which sees a huge number of DNS or did not start runners. Kind of hard to plan out a 100 miler in advance each year, Ken. So it was a welcome change to see an announcement that entry for the 2019 Angeles Crest 100 will be continued as a lottery but that lottery won't open until Monday, December 3rd, 2018, which is conveniently just two days after the Western States and Hard Rock 100 lotteries. Bravo, AC100 on this move. Now get a damn wait list going. Happy twin birthdays to both Gary Robbins and Ultra Chef Turtle Miller this week. We're not exactly sure what the Ultra Chef was up to, but Robbins was spotted on social media doing this in a movie theater. Caption it for us, cause we aren't sure what's going on. Outhouse viewer Sean O'Connor called me out on social media recently, suggesting a butter mile would be a solid challenge. I thought it was a terrible idea, but played along saying, I'll do it if you do. Well, famous last words because folks, he's done it. He even melted down the butter before drinking a stick between each lap. <laughs> My life. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time. If you have crazy stories to share or think I should actually attempt the butter mile, tweet us or dip into our Insta DMs at Mountain Outpost. Have a shitty week. <clears throat> a huge thank you to our Patreon supporters for making this show possible. If you want to join, hit the link below. Also, be sure to check out the link to own this one of a kind pair of Jam Jam's pink flamingo sunglasses. Adios.